Hi, so um, my study is on fibroblast growth factor 23, or FGF23. We, um, we know that FGF23 is elevated in patients with chronic kidney disease and end-stage renal disease. There have been thousands of papers out there that have looked at this um, and have shown that this hormone, which is released from bone and is very important in, um, in vitamin D and phosphate, this hormone has a dramatic effect on mortality, or at least it has been associated uh, with mortality. A lot of this work has been done by Miles Wolf and others. So, but all of that work is in chronic kidney disease. No one has ever looked at it in acute kidney injury. So that was the purpose of this study. We enrolled 30 patients uh, as controls and 30 patients with acute kidney injury. And these patients uh, were in the regular hospital ward as well as the intensive care unit. And we measured their FGF23 levels at baseline, which means at diagnosis of AKI, and then again five days later. And what we found was that the levels of FGF23 were dramatically higher in patients with AKI compared to controls, as shown here, 1,400 compared to 200. Um, and probably most interestingly, when we looked at the relationship with outcomes, we found that FGF23 predicts the combined endpoint of death or need for renal replacement therapy. So whereas creatinine and all the other variables did not predict the outcomes, we found that when we broke up um, FGF23 into tertiles, there was a, shown here in black, there was a dramatic, um, a dramatic relationship. So that if you were in the highest tertile of FGF23, you had a 70% chance of dying or needing renal replacement therapy, as opposed to only a 10% chance if you were in the lowest tertile. And so we don't know if um, if FGF23 is just a biomarker, um, or whether and, and just an innocent bystander, or whether it's directly toxic uh, and is causing the worst, these worse outcomes. And that remains to be seen in future studies.